Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode in our AI series. In this episode we are going to add on to our NPC's AI um, for so we can get some more behaviours. So at the moment we just got him to run around randomly, choose a random spot, run to it and so on and so forth. The next job is to make him uh, actually chase, uh, actually f look at you, see you and then chase you when he sees you. So quite a few things to cover today. Um, but it ultimately it starts adding a lot more complex layers to our NPC. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our behavior tree. So the way this works is we've got this selector going to a sequence here. So this se sequence here well, is going to handle the uh, random, rota uh, random location running around. And we can change this here so we can make it nice and sense uh, in, in node name here. Um, find... Uh, go to random location okay so that would be that sequence there um, that we done last time so next what we're going to do is we're going to add another sequence on this side though and this one is going to handle the sequence of events to make them chase the player so let's name this one uh, chase player Let's capitalise this because that's going to set me off. And there we go. Cool. So the way this works, we need to make another task. So we made a task last time to find a random location. This time we're going to find the location of the player. We want to chase the player. So go to new task and choose BT task blueprint base. In here we need to have the event execute. AI, event receive execute AI, which means as soon as this task is triggered, this will trigger. And to end it, you need a finish execute. So it's a good idea to put both in at the very start. So we need to, on this task, find the player's location. That's the whole purpose of this task. So let's right click and get the player character. And this will turn an act, uh, a character, or an actor rather, and we can get the actor location of that character and if we want we can then go find navigable uh, no just do navigable get random point in navigable radius so last time we used this we used the origin of the controlled pawn this time we're using the player character's origin so the radius of this i'm going to make this quite short so i'm going to make this only like 100 so we've got a bit of play, which uh, means that the cat, the NPC won't run directly at you, but will run towards you in a hopefully almost random lo uh, sense. So we get 100 radius around the char uh, the player character. So we'll choose a point within 100 uh, units in a radius around the player character, and then we're going to do what we've done last time and store this on a blackboard key. So let's make the blackboard key here so i'm going to call this vector and we'll choose the row, uh, type of ve um, not vector blackboard key and this will be instance editable you want it editable because you want it to be accessed and changed by the blackboard which is outside of this blueprint so from here we can drag the vector out choose get and we can now set value on the blackboard as vector and this can plug into our other nodes and the value can go down to random location so we're storing the value the location value from here onto this blackboard key of vector when you're done click the success box and click compile now i'm going to close this i'm going to rename it so it doesn't have that stupid name and we're going to get find player location and go back to the behavior tree. I can now add that find player location on a behavior tree. And you can see here the vector key is now showing here and it's pointing towards a target location blackboard, which is what I want. Okay. So next is going to be very similar to what we've got here. So I'm going to make the move to on here as well. And we'll make that make sure that's using the same blackboard key of target location so this finds the location this moves it to the location 
Okay, and I'm not going to bother the wait because I don't want him to wait around. I want him to actually chase the player. So now we've got these two branches. The trick now is to get it so it knows which one to go down. Because by default, it'll always go down the left-hand one. Okay, so we need to tell it to switch between each one based on a condition. And that condition is whether or not it can see the player. So to do that, we're going to make a blackboard key by clicking on the blackboard up the top here, a new key of a boolean type, and I'm going to name this one can see player. Save this, go back to your behavior tree, and we're now going to give these sequences a th uh, something called a decorator. Now, a decorator is some sort of condition or something that uh, will mean that it will only go into this sequence if it's true. So right click on here, go add decorator, and you want to choose the blackboard decorator click on the actual blue part of the blackboard decorator and here you can change the name of it and change the settings of it so the key query is set and i want to change it to is not set and the blackboard key to be can see player so basically if we can't see the player it's going to do this bit so it will only enter this node it will only get past this bit here if that is true okay that's what a decorator does so i'm going to name that one can't C player. I'm now going to add another decorator on the other one, and this will be the opposite. So is set, and will be can see player. And the name of this one is can see player. Okay, so now we've got a boolean which controls which branch we go down. So if it goes down here, it won't. It will see that this fails, and then goes back up to the selector and goes down to the next one. Okay. So if, if the way a selector works, if it hits a branch and it fails, it will go along the line and do the next one until it reaches one that succeeds. If this succeeded, it wouldn't do this. Okay, so just carry on down here and then go back up to the root. It will only bounce to the next one if this fails. That's the difference between this and a sequence. A sequence will do this, then this, then this, regardless or not whether this fails or succeeds. So we've got this boolean. The next task we need to do is make it so we can actually set this boolean on whether or not the actual character, the NPC, can actually see the player. So there's a couple ways of doing this, and I'm going to go with the perception system. So let's close the behavior tree and open up the AI controller for our NPC. So our NPC AI controller, we're going to add a component onto this thing called AI perception. And you want the one that just says AI perception, not the stimuli source well, perception. And when we click on it, we can see the detail panel on the right hand side. In here, we can configure how this AI can perceive the world around it. So over here, you'll see senses config, and it's got zero elements to touch it. So at the moment, it doesn't see or do anything. If you click the little plus icon, we can get an option to change one to whatever one we want here. So I've got hearing, sight, team, whatever. So I'm going to change the sight, and I'm going to open this up and open it up again and you can see here I've got loads of settings here so I can change their radius of their sight uh, the angle of the sight of the peripheral vision and so on and so forth so the first thing the only thing I'm really going to change here is the detection by affiliation so I'm going to expand this open and for now we're just going to tick all these on this basically means it will see enemies neutrals and friendlies all the same which is what we're going to do for now just to test this working and in a later video we'll change it so it only follows uh, what it conceives to be an enemy okay so we're going to click compile and this is only half of the thing okay so the ai has ai perception basically telling it that it's looking out for these things what we need to do is tell it what can be possibly looked out for using a stimuli source so Let's go onto our third person character, the player character. And on here, we're going to add a stimuli source to it. So AI, stim, or not AI, just do stimuli, stim, UI source, AI perception, stimuli source. And on here, we can click on here, and over here, you can see some options. So we can auto register as a source and register as a source for which senses. So I'm going to tick the box for auto register source and I'm going to hit the plus icon here and change this one to the sight one. So the enemy can see this character. 
So this is useful if you've got things that are like noisemakers or things you want to throw to distract guards or anything like that. You can change this to a hearing one. Okay, so this, this makes sound and for the uh, AI to hear. So just for sight for this one. And that's all we have to do for the player character. I click compile and we can close that down. So now we can program this. I'm just going to give it this tick. Don't need it. So click on your AI perception and you can right click and you'll see add event for AI perception. If you expand this open, you can see there's two uh, options to choose from. You've got add on perception updated and add on target perception updated. If you go on, on target perception updated, AI perception, you'll get this event come up. And you can see it returns an actor and a stimulus. So the stimulus can be broken. So let's break out the stimulus here and should break. And here we get all the information that we got about that sense. So how long have we sensed them for and whether or not we successfully sensed them. The next bit is we need to make sure we are getting the player character and also making sure that we are... Um, uh, not making sure uh, adding this successfully sensed to that blackboard so from here we're going to go cast to third person character and attach the object to the actor so this is going to be perceived on target this is the target so it's perceived this actor we're going to check that's the player character and as a third person character um uh, sorry, that's third person character. so from here we can now say on success of this we want to get the, I'm sorry, not get there, just right click here, so get blackboard here, and this returns the blackboard, and from here, we can set value on the blackboard as a ball, and click it up to the cast. So the boolean, you can see here is true, and that's what we want to go for it successfully sense, so we can hook that up nice and easy, but the key name will be the name of the key that we typed in where is it on our blackboard so can see player so we need to type that in manually so we go from here and you want to type in make literal name and this means you can then type it in so I'm going to type in here exactly how it was can see player and that will do here so click compile and let's go back to the game now if I play this, he'll look around, walk around randomly until he sees me and he should run towards me, like so. Now there is one uh, fault with this and that is because he doesn't chase you. That move to just makes him move directly to a point, okay? Doesn't update or anything like that. So it will just move to when he last saw me. Yep, 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 come on which will probably be up the stairs there so it's not 100 accurate okay so what we need to do is in the next episode is add more detail to this so that he does a bit of smarter running uh, towards you actually he does follow you if he sees you but as soon as he stops seeing you he becomes a dumb enemy again okay so it goes to where he last saw you. So he needs to be able, when he, after that wait he does, he needs to be able to see you when he's waiting. Hang on, there we go. Now he runs towards you. Okay. So the solution to that is we're going to make a service, and that will be in the next episode. So next episode we're going to make a service, uh, which will make us be able to track where the player is at all times, and make then the, uh, we're going to make a custom task to make him move to in real time to the player's location. Hopefully you've learned something on watching this video and if you have any questions or like to see specific behaviours want to be added, please leave a comment below. And if you want to support me and my future endeavours, please head over to Patreon like these people have and throw us a couple of bucks and you'll get some access uh, to the next episode of this uh, straight away as well as many other videos that are exclusive to the Patreon uh, family over on Discord. So uh, yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.